हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेट अस नाउ डिस्कस अबाउट फिलोड्स ट्यूमर और सिस्टोसार्कोमा फिलोड्स सो लेट अस फर्स्ट आई मीन इफ यू नीड एक्स्ट्रा इनफॉरमेशन दैट दिस नॉमेंटेशन इज मेनली ड्रिवन बाय म्यूलर uh that to in 19 in 1838 uh so this tumor has the name says filloid means leaf so this is leaf like appearance if you see crossly so it is most common at the age group of 30 to 70 years female and grossly it is a giant fibrinoma first and histologically uh, it was more uh, cellular connective tissue. Later, WHO proposed the term Fillot's tumor. Right? So, this Fillot's tumor, though uh, the term cystosarcoma Fillot's is a misleading term, but right now Fillot's tumor is what is used. So, Fillot's tumor is basically classified into three types. types. One is benign tumor. And the other is borderline, and the third one is malignant tumor. So, coming to the morphological features of Fillot's tumor, morphologically, in the morphological features, if you see grossly, the tumor is large, which is 10 to 15 centimeters in diameter, round to oval. And bocellated and not fully encapsulated to say if you see cut surface the cut surface is grayish white as the name here uh, says cysto so it is grayish white with cysts with cystic cavities and it also has areas of hemorrhage areas of hemorrhage necrosis and degenerative changes and histologically this fillot's tumor is basically consists of a hypercellular stroma right yeah. and accompanied by proliferation of benign tactile structures the villot tumor resembles with fibroadenoma because it has many ductal elements right but the stroma is hypercellular basically the major difference between this and fibroadenoma is that the uh, a stroma here it is basically hypercellular you can see the hypercellular stroma with many many cells right the stroma here is hypercellular you can see many cells which are drawing so it shows that the stroma here is basically hypercellular and it is accompanied by a proliferation of these ductal structures so these are the ducts so there is proliferation of these ducts many many ducts are seen so right so this pillow's tumor uh, has what is it has it has hypercellular stroma and it also has many ductal elements many ductal proliferations so how are they differentiated into benign borderline and malignant differentiation into benign borderline and malignant is made by basically four things one is frequency of mitosis 
then cellular atypia then cellularity and infiltrative mar margins so all these are the major uh, things which are seen one is frequency of mitosis next cellular atypia cellularity and infiltrative margins these uh, describe or differentiate the tumor as either malignant or borderline the third and the last benign tumor of the breast is intraductal papilloma intraductal papilloma it is also a benign lesion and it's most common where does it most common occur it most commonly occurs in lacticiferous duct or sinus lacticiferous sinus mm -hmm. clinically clinically it mainly it presents the patient comes to you with serous or serous sanguinous discharge from the breast serous or serous sanguinous discharge from the breast right so what are the morphological features so grossly if you see this intraductal papilloma is solitary only single it uh, presents as single and small and it will be less than 1 cm in diameter and located on the major mammary ducts near the nipple right and this is uh, rarely it may be multiple these multiple if they are present then it is called as multiple papillomatosis if you see histologically uh the uh, intraductal papilloma is basically has many papillae right uh, having well differentiated so fibrovascular stacks attached to the ductal wall so if we have to draw this um, it has by my epithelial cells so basically it has uh, so if you draw a see, picture uh, it has many papillae that are intraductal papillae these are papillae structure multiple papillae and these have these are the papillae and these have a fibrovascular stacks these are fibrovascular stacks which are attached to the ductal wall so this is a duct and this is attached to the ductal wall and this ductal wall is lined by benign cuboidal epithelium so this is what cuboidal epithelium looks like so it is lined by benign cuboidal epithelium right and this cuboidal epithelium is supported by me my epithelial cells the, the thing is the duct structure is completely normal these are my epithelial cells right so what did you see here even there is fibrovascular so these are vascular elements so basically uh, this is um, many papillae multiple many or multiple papillae are seen yeah but the picture sh shouldn't be like this right it is intraductal so it is inside the duct so it should be something like this right yeah i just recognize right now so this is the duct yeah this is what the picture might look like all these are just imaginary pictures if you really get the real picture you can 
send me through my email id so that even i could discuss it with our friends so this is multiple papillae are seen and this papillae has a and this is supported by a fibrovascular stack this is attached to the duct ductal wall which is lined by benign cuboidal epithelium so this is what an intraductal papilloma looks like right the first one please ignore it right yeah so so today we have completed all the benign lesions of the breast which include fibro adenoma which has two types of cap uh, patterns intracanalicular and pericanalicular and also fillod's tumor right in today's class we have completed fillod's tumor and intraductal papilloma in the next class we would learn about the carcinoma of breast uh only carcinoma of breast may take 2 to 3 classes uh so yeah. we would deal with carcinoma of breast in the next class okay bye please don't forget to comment please don't forget to comment